With the biking course over, it's time to prepare for the trek, which will carry on throughout the evening. Once again, racers must load their packs with all their necessities while also considering weight. Even for the most experienced adventure racer, this course, designed by Revolution 3, left difficult decisions for navigation. Having no cell phone or GPS reception in the mountain, only five mandatory points and a whole slew of optional points, this course is even more dangerous than the norm. If racers do not return, officials could search for days without finding the lost contestants. Into the spur. Down into the river. As dusk approaches, the temperamental weather also draws near to create an inconvenient coincidence. This um, area provides a lot of challenging terrain, and so I think um, looking at the maps and seeing that lots of our points are on peaks or hilltops, I think there'll be a lot of um, elevation gain and loss, and so I think that'll be challenging. With nightfall approaching, racers return from the trek and will transition into bike. Riding on the trails in the middle of the night gives a whole new meaning to pitch black. Before attending this epic adventure, contestants were given a list of mandatory equipment and gear they must acquire before setting out. At this point in the race, the headlamp proves to be life-saving. A powerful light attached to a flexible headband can reach up to 54 meters ahead of the racer, who can only see what is illuminated. Therefore, from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m., contestants lack peripheral vision of their wooded surroundings. The way that this course is set up also is that there are only two mandatory points and so that leaves a lot of um, opportunity for gaining um, a lot of those optional points and I think a lot of strategy is going to come into play and I think some of those points will be um, bike optional or truck optional. So really trying to figure out our strategy in a sense of um, which points we get and in what order and how we decide to get them, I think that's going to be a real challenge and we're really going to have to work together. I think the hardest part is probably going to be you know, the midnight to 6 a.m. portion of the race uh, because by then I think we're all going to be pretty physically exhausted. Hopefully there's no team infighting at that point, but I just think we're all going to want to get to the end so badly and we're still going to have, you know, six more hours to go. These girls are really opinionated. They are never going to let themselves be pulled by someone else. They're just going to say, I want to sit down and rest. And so I think at the end of the day, we're not the kind of team where we have enough strength to be responsible for somebody else. Our race is going to be every woman for herself. Jody and I are going to continue so that we can at least say that we did it, and our team made it all the way through, and two of our team members are going to go back. And we agreed that everybody makes the right decision for them, and nobody is mad at anybody, and nobody is disappointed, and everybody does what works for them. And we all made it here, and even though it took us like an hour. Like, even though we are um, a good uh, five and a half hours late, we made it. We all made it to this transition area, which was like incredibly challenging. <laughs> What was the most challenging part of getting here, guys? Everything. Today. Today was the challenging part. Everything. Like, we just... It was just way... Up. It was harder, <laughs> harder than we expected. We probably didn't train hard enough. We got lost. Yeah. For we didn't have our bikes hours. assembled. We just... Everything went wrong. <laughs> but thankfully, people who were heading back, all of our lights went out. And Every single light. Everything, everything we have is from somebody else. Like, they all loved it. Other really competitors amazing. gave us their stuff. That is incredible. It's really important in adventure racing that everybody plays their own part on the team. And one of the things that, uh, that's one of the things that really makes adventure racing a unique sport is that everybody brings something to the team that makes um, the whole team stronger. And I think I probably play a bit of a mom part on the team. Um, we have a navigator, we have um, different people who carry a lot of gear, and uh, we have backup navigators, and um, we, um, re it's really just important that we're looking out for each other. Um, probably go down that camp, probably camp down that or like whatever.
What's Bro, up, guys? are we okay leaving our bikes here? I think my, our experiences with Amazing Race help in finding checkpoints because it does seem if there's a checkpoint in the vicinity, if we get to the vicinity, they're pretty easy for me to spot versus maybe some of the other people that haven't done that. So uh, that's similar. Okay, um, I'm not sure my brain can comprehend this at the moment. Okay, we have to go up. Like our friends and fans of the shows have been so supportive. It's amazing. Like they're really? so impressed with what we're doing and they want to wish us luck and they want to. They're about our, our Twitter, and they're probably really freaked out because we haven't checked in in a really long time. I had to laugh. Just so when I thought okay. I was not a reality okay. TV girl and I was an adventure racer, I come across my freaking $25 <laughs> face cream. <laughs> I swear to God. There are a lot of triathletes here who are very, very strong racers, and uh, they, they're, they're very, very fast people, and um, so we can't really take any of these teams for granted. Back to the TA. Call it a day. Maybe hit a K or one of those on the way down. See how I feel. Cramping up. That's gonna be a long hike of bike. Yeah, over that pass. I think I've had enough. <laughs> Morning finally arrives, and the race elapses as contestants collect their final checkpoint. The feeling of completing such a feat is indescribable. And emotionally, I never could have predicted how amazing I would feel. I feel so happy to have done it with Jody. I feel so proud. I feel like we honored a commitment that we made to ourselves, that we made to all the people who supported us before we came out to the race, the people who supported us during the race. We freaking did it. We did it. Against the rain, against the mud, we did it. The first thing I would say is prepare. <laughs> like, we maybe had two months, and I have never done, I don't do these things. I don't do triathlons, I don't do marathons. I go to the gym, I play beach volleyball, and I like to ski, you know? So I did spend three hour sessions in the gym, like doing cardio the whole time, but you need even more like and I live in Texas so it's flat you have to work hard and find a way just to prepare as hard as you can because together at the exact same time. It's a 26 hour race and it came down to the last second and that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, we had a great race. I'm excited about our race and um, right now I'm very tired and very cold. But it was tough. It was a tough course. It was, it was us against the course as much as it was us against every, all the other teams. So it's, uh, it was a great race, we had a great time. It was a beautiful day yesterday and a beautiful evening, so we're not even minding the rain this morning, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of different emotions all at once, it really is. 